Greetings, hello, and welcome. Today I'm going to be playing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I don't usually play this sort of game, but I had it on the DS years ago and loved it, so I figured that I would try and stream it. I clumsily narrated the characters along the way and thought it was an interesting video, so I trimmed it up and here it is. It's quite a long video, but I figured it might be something that people can fall asleep to. Enjoy. Gasp, gasp. <gasps> Somebody did a murder. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. <gasps> There's the bad man. Oh, I've got to find somebody to pin this on. Someone like him. Ooh. I'll make it look like he did it. <laughs> That's exactly how his voice goes. You think you've heard of this before? It's an old one. I played it on the DS and that was a while ago. Okay, so now we're at the district court. Defendant lobby number two. <gasps> Boy, am I nervous. Mia. Right! Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Chief. Ryu, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favour. A favour? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. <clears throat> I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. <gasps> Crash thud. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Ellipses. Is, is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Good detective work there, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sigh. Oh, there he is, Nick. Oh, his name is Butts, so there you go. G'day, Non. <laughs> Welcome. So, we've just had an introduction to this game. There's a murder. And this guy, who's apparently a friend, is being framed. So, we're the attorney, we have to help him. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. What? Give me the death sentence. I, I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. There we go. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Sploosh. A young woman <laughs> was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky lucky sap dating her. <gasps> Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, 
It's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. All right. So that's the start-up of the case. <laughs> Let's head to the district courtroom. Ooh. Wow, that looks spiffy. Court is now in session for the tri- Now I'm not going to bother with all these voices. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> the, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Ellipses. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Gulp. Hands shaking. Arms weak, mum spaghetti, something. Eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. It's Larry Butts. Hang on, I think. Can I just click on it? Yeah, good, good. The defendant? Well, uh, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. Um, it's like, what's the name of the defendant? And that's like, okay, you're ready to do a trial for murder. Oh, next question. Okay. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. All right. It's... wait... uh-oh. Uh oh, he's forgotten the name. Oh no, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, uh, the victim, um, of course I know the victim's name. I... I just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look. The victim's name is listed in the court record. Just pressed tab to check it at any time, okay? All right, so let's just hit tab. <laughs> Great way to do a tutorial. This game is almost like story time with Julia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not quite a quiz game, but um, you do have to reference evidence and all that kind of thing. But I don't think we've actually visited the crime scene on this one yet. Anyway, all right. So, no one would believe. So this is our attorney's badge. Can you see the cursor on there? I hope so. Anyway, but we also have Cindy's autopsy report. So there you go, her name is Cindy. I wonder if I can take a closer look at that. Time of death. No, 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 4 to 5 p.m. Loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Hang on, let's hit R and visit the profiles. Okay, so this is everyone involved in the case so far. We've got Mia, Larry Bunce, Cindy Stone, who was the victim, and Winston Payne, the prosecutor for the case. He lacks presence and generally bad at getting his points across. Okay. So the our opponent, the prosecutor, is um his eyebrows look like responsibility sort of rolls off to the side, so he, he looks a bit worried. Anyway, let's go back. Alright. So, Cindy is her name. Cindy Stone. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? 
Cinder block. <laughs> Just say it's me, if I. <laughs> no, we know it's Cindy. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the cause of death. We've already looked that up. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Uh, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the Thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to court record. And there it is. Just a little statue. It's rather heavy. <laughs> also reminds you of the game L.A. Noir. In that there are detectives and you have to gather evidence and stuff. Yeah, for sure. I haven't played that game in quite a while. Didn't mind it. Um, Alright, let's continue. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Let's do that right now. So now we have the Thinker statue in the evidence. So I can't do anything with that just yet other than to look at it. Oh, you beat L.A. Noir. Nice. You play that as well, Non. But you could move around in that one. <laughs> you can actually move around in this. Just haven't got to that stage yet. But just sort of in the courty bit at the beginning. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution call the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. <laughs> Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. And there he is, up on the up on the stand. Ahem. Mr. Butts. Uh, his voice keeps changing, whatever. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped on you? Oh, dumped you? <laughs> Slightly different meaning there, but <clears throat> we don't... We, don't, we haven't gathered any evidence alluding to that at this stage. Uh, and recently dumped you. <laughs> hey, watch it. Oh, look at his little eyes. Watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? Uh-oh. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me, ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what do you describe as generally what we mean by dumped? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day of the, before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she has that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Oh, poor butts. He's getting so hurt right now. 
Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... <gasps> wait and see what happens, or stop him from answering? Hmm, Bill and Ted, dude, yeah, he's got that vibe about him. Um, let's, I guess, stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, wince. Oh, take that uppercut in logic. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Aww. Yeah, and, and when I meet her, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. When I meet her in the afterlife, I think I missed that. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused... I think the voices are changing every three seconds. I apologize. I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh, boy. This is not look... This is so not looking good. <laughs> Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gull? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Huh? Uh-oh. He went, what do I do? <sighs> hmm. So now we have an option. Save him, have him answer honestly or stop him from answering. Let's, um, this might be a mistake, but I'm going to have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was there. I went. <gasps> Ooh. The court's gone all funny and whispery over that. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. <laughs> she wasn't home, man. <laughs> like, the voices just change constantly. So, like, I didn't see her. <laughs> Objection! Your Honor... Your aunt, your, oh, how did he go? I've forgotten. Your Honor, how the, no. <clears throat> your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. <gasps> oh, no. Order. Order in the court. Hmm. All right. So, there we go. Yes, different every time with the voices. <laughs> hey, I'm trying, man. It's hard. <laughs> Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sarwit to the stand. Ooh. Oh, here he is. Oh, that's the guy! That's the guy! Mr. Sarwit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, yes. Newspapers, yes. <laughs> Mr. Sarwit, you must you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Dun dun dun. Alright, here we go. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a, in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. 
Thinking it strange, I thought I looked inside the apartment. When I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Ooh! There is an inconsistency. I'll have to see. I'm, I'm seeing this already. Here is the case report. Time of death between 4 and 5 p.m. Ah. Ah. Eee. Cracks are showing, buddy. That's grin. It's not going to get you anywhere. The man. Can I? Can I object? I can't object yet. Okay. How did his voice go again? The man who ran, who, who ran was without doubt the defending sit, defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Oh, I jumped in on that quickly. He looked like he was about to say hmm, and it was what he said. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testi testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. But he used a payphone. Your Honor... I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. I don't know why they're English, whatever. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Oh, hang on, he doesn't know what a cross-examin- Oh, this is, a, this is an issue. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? The newspaper man did it. Guilty written all over his face. Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? Was he lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or your client is really guilty. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find your contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, Present it and rub it in the witness's face. Face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tab and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Here we go. Look at you. Witness account. All right. I was going door to door when selling subscriptions when I saw a man feeding the apartment. So, this statement seems to be correct. Because even Butts's account fits with that. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Okay. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving dead. Well, she is dead, so that's right. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Okay, it seems to be all right. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time was exactly 1 p.m. Oh, that's the one. Let's present evidence. Dun, dun, dun. Present. So, that's the time. Objection! Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m. Are you sure? 
Yes, it was exactly 1 p.m. for certain. Mm. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Dun dun dun. Here's evidence. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes at the time of death was sometime after 4 p.m. There was no nobody to uh nobody to find at 1 p.m. <gasps> How do you explain this three-hour gap? <gasps> uh oh. Oh, that uh uh. uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. He's sweating. He's sweating. After this testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sowett, why were you so certain that you found the body at, at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that, that's a good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do, point out the contradictions. Lies always be beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Okay, so now he's going to re-deliver the testimony to explain his kerfuffle with the time. So let's see how that goes. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Ah, there was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but that was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Mm, terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Well, that's bollocks. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on the, on the taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Yes. We know what to do. Because there was a blackout. So there couldn't have been electricity. All right. So, see when I found the body, I heard the time. We just need to find the right point to press for evidence. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Lies! Let's present the blackout record from noon until 6 p.m. So it's impossible. Present. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Eh. I, uh, yeah. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sarwit? N no, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Mr. Sarwit, the court would... would prefer to hear an accurate accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. <laughs> You're shimmering and sweating up a storm. Fabulous. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sarwit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. I'm correcting his statements all the time. Can't get away with this. Hearing the time. Actually, actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. Hm. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Hmm. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. 
Let's press him on that. The murder weapon. Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. Hang on. Table clock? It wasn't a table clock, it was a statue. That's what I said. What I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Hmm. Something is fishy here. That must have been what I saw. Alright. Murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Table clock in the apartment wasn't there. Okay, let's 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 try and present the statue on this statement and see what it does. That he's lying. Shoot him. <laughs> It's not that kind of game. I'll just get my my shotgun and do some explosive shots on him. All right, statue. Um, maybe this will do it. Can I present this? Huh? The music stopped. Wait just a moment. Ta-da! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Yeah, yeah. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sarwit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honour, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? I don't know. I need to look at it. Can I, can I look at the clock? A statue in the shape of the thinker, it's rather heavy. It's lying through his teeth. He sure is. Um, there's not much I can do. Um, hmm. Well, of course I have a problem with his testimony. He's lying. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. I think you're exaggerating here, dude. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Okay, yeah, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> Stumbling into the right answer. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Hang on, yes, he did enter the apartment. He tried to use the phone. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went into the apartment. Maybe I misread that. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. <laughs> oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Oh, goodness. You struck her with the clock. And the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Oh, you busted now. That was the sound he heard. <gasps> Indeed, gavel strike. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. Sawit, the sound must, must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. All right, see you, Nun. Have a good one. <laughs> That's why you were so certain about the time. You did it! What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? <laughs> that, that, that day, I, I never. I, look, I, the, the clock, I heard. Go up. 
Oh, goodness. He lost his wig. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. <laughs> it was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her. And he should burn, burn. Give him death. Oh, goodness. Did you see that ragey wig throw? <laughs> Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honour, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defence's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honour, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have even any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honour, the sound Mr. Showit heard, so it heard, was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock, examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbours. Let's try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here, in this court. Your Honour, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. <gasps> Beep. I think it's 8.25. Ooh, that certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? He says it's currently 11.25, even though it was 8. <gasps> Ack! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. <clears throat> so, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> Ha! Ha ha! You forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? Because you heard it? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. <laughs> He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, <gasps> this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. Uh-oh. Come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Grr. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. <gasps> Not so fast, Mr. Sowitz, chimes in Mia. Dun, dun, dun. Mia, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Hmm. Well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right? <laughs> right, right. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Because he hit her, perhaps dislodged the batteries? Something like that? Let's see. Dot ellipses. Wait! 
maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright? You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Hang on, what are you talking about? Time of death, 4 to 7 of the AM. Blunt trauma. Statue of the thinker, it's rather heavy. Victim arrived from home from Paris the day before the murder. And the electricity was out from noon to 6 p.m. So it's not plugged in, so it would be battery powered. Uh. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see. The evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The autopsy report. Because if it said one, maybe they put the... Oh, I don't know. I'll try and present the autopsy report. Um, excuse me, this, this proves your claim how? I can't see what that evidence has to do with the clock. Uh-oh, that wasn't it. Uh-oh. One more chance. Give me just one more chance. All right, Mr. Wright. But time is not on your side. Be quick about it. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Because it's battery powered. How do I say it's battery powered? Do I just present the clock again? Uh-oh. Noon to noon to noon. The day before the murder? See, that's not going to help. Maybe I'll try representing the statue. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It doesn't look like I can do it. Oh, I can look at the evidence. Uh-oh. Arrived home from Paris the day before the murder. Oh! No, 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 I have to present this. Because the power was out. So he'll, he'll talk about it being battery powered. Maybe that will help. It'll link the information back. All right. Uh-oh, how do I go back? I can't see what that evidence has to do with the clock. Uh-oh, yep, I know, I stuffed up. Uh, all right. Okay, it's giving me another chance. There. It must be that. Oh, no! That's not doing it either. That wasn't it. Uh oh, be quick about it. It's the clock was running slow because I'm a lawyer. I presented the autopsy report. I presented the statue. It wouldn't be the the evidence okay what the victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder as we all know the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours when it's 4 p.m. here it's 1 a.m. the next day. Oh! The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since. Oh, that's not him for you. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. Welcome back. Oh no, you're not back. <laughs> Misread that. Never mind. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Ah, there we go. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sowett. Or should I say, 
Mr. Did it? Oh my god. You tried, Phoenix. <laughs> Critical. Oh, jeez. Did he just foam at the mouth and pass out? Gavel clomp. Order. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. <laughs> he... <laughs> He was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Hooray! We saved our high school friend. And with that, this court is adjourned. All right, awesome. So, we didn't actually get to do any evidence gathering or anything for this case in particular. It was all just about pressing testimonies and um, all that kind of thing. Phoenix, it turns out that Frank Sowett was a common burglar. Ah. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... <gasps> All right, so here's the story unfolding. When Larry went to, to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sowett let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sowett grabbed the nearest blunt, blunt object he could find and clocked her. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Oh, no. August 3rd, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew! Still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If, she this, if she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. And there he is. My life is over, dude. <laughs> Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Uh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. <laughs> but, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... No, never mind. So it turns out she was a sugar daddy, but she had sugar daddies on the side, and he was totally in love with her. So he he's still very upset that she got clocked, so to speak. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? His name's Larry. Huh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. Oh, no. Uh, thanks. I really owe you one. His name's Larry. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Uh, no, I couldn't. Oh, he's immediately cracking onto her. <laughs> Aww. That's how you forget the, the drearies, I suppose. <laughs> hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Look at him swing in his hand. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A, a present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made this one... For, what, I made one for her and one for me. Really? You made this? Huh. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. 
and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? Sob. Larry. Mm. Are you so sure? Excuse me? Oh my god, that's actually what they said. <laughs> yeah, he's, he forgot Windy Cindy pretty quick. <laughs> Poor Harry Butts. Hey, G-Man! Glad you could join this weird stream. <laughs> Excuse me? I think she caught quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta symp sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Oh. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, um... Okay, so apparently we have some evidence that proves that she actually did like him. Cindy's autopsy report. Cause of death, I don't know. Statue. Oh, of course, she still had his statue that he gave her. Let's just double check the other evidence. The victim apparently arrived in Paris. No. Okay, so I'll say the clock. Because she still had the clock that he made for her. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Aww. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she travelled. <laughs> Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. But, aw, look, he's all blushy-faced. So there you go. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take travelling. Good point, Phoenix. <laughs> well, make of it what you will. Be depressed again. Oh, now he's going to be sad. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks, dude. I hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realise things, things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. <laughs> and in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> oh, this is so cheesy. Nice slice of gouda with this. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Ah, oh, well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? Ah, we'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, and speaking of Harry, Larry, poor Harry butts, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh... Yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Oh, Phoenix is getting on the side. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the clock he gave Mia. Ellipses. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Ooh, plot thickens. <laughs> it's getting thick. And my promise to tell Larry the chief about. Oh, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry <gasps> would be one promise. I wouldn't be able to keep the end. Oh, intrigue, murder, courts. Wow.
I hope you enjoyed that interesting little game. If you stuck through this video the whole way, I have a little prize for you. Here it is. It's a moose on roller skates. Until next time, this has been Chet. Happy gaming.